Our first speaker is May Surmek. She is the founder, she is the owner of Third Space Kentucky. Third Space represents where we spend that time between home, between work, between ex exchanging ideas and building relationships, strengthening our communities. It's that third space. I was like, May, I really get that. I really had to meditate on that for a second when I read about that. But um, you can find May at some of the best food places in Berea, Kentucky. I really liked this, visiting Noodle Nirvana, also featured in her Twitter bio. Saw that in there or on her Twitter uh, account. So we're gonna let her speak about the success she's seeing, the change she's making. Please help me in maybe doing a virtual clap for May as she shares some of her insight. Thank you so much, Marvis. So nice to see all these lovely faces today. and. So happy to be here um, with Canopy and everyone. So I want to talk a little bit about sort of our journey as a small business here in Kentucky. Um, it kind of, um, all of this kind of hit me when I was invited to attend a conference a couple of years ago in Chicago. It was put on by the Social Enterprise Alliance. And at the time, I remember thinking to myself, why am I being invited to this? I own a noodle shop that seats 50 people in Berea, Kentucky. And can social enterprises even be for profit? Because you know, at the noodle shop, we certainly depend on profits to survive. So you know, I know we have this entire wall at the restaurant dedicated to highlighting a local nonprofit. And sure, we, we did manage to work with our community and our staff and we raised $120,000 for four nonprofits during our first four years of operation. And yeah, you know, a lot of people do this. We pay our staff a few dollars more than minimum wage, but can small mom and pops really make that much of a difference? Um, we've heard about the larger companies doing this, the Ben and Jerry's of the world where they weave their social activism into their actual mission. Um, theirs is to use our company in innovative ways to make the world a better place. But again, we're talking small businesses, less than 15 employees in Kentucky that are working with sometimes really slim profit margins already. The Small Business Association, sorry, the Small Business Administration um, defines small businesses as having less than 500 employees. 98% have less than 100, and 89% have less than 20. There's 30.7 million small businesses in the United States that make up for 99.9% .9 of all US businesses. Can you imagine the impact we would have collectively if we were to be a little bit more intentional about the way that we treated our staff, our community, the world around us? Can you imagine how small businesses can really come together and really um, begin making a dent in important social issues affecting our community every day? So my husband, Adam and I started um, a group of restaurants in, in Berea. We own um, three restaurants actually. Noodle Nirvana is our flagship restaurant that Marva spoke about earlier. Um, we also own a sandwich shop called Happy Jack's World Sandwich Bar and uh, we own a donut shop called Hole and Corner Donut. It appears that we do love our carbs very much. Um, when I started this business in 2016, I had just stepped out of a 20 year career in nonprofit management. And I had become um, quite disillusioned with um, the unsustainable nature of nonprofit, the nonprofit funding model. And I just thought there had to be a better way. So armed with a very valuable degree for the hospitality industry, a counseling degree and zero restaurant experience, I opened our first restaurant, which was Noodle Nirvana. And our mission was quite simple, to make great noodles and change the world. Um, when one aspires to change the world, you can't really do that as an afterthought or as a side hustle or merely by donating a few gift cards to um, a local nonprofit during their annual raffle. We wanted to make a significant impact in our community. So what we did is we partnered with one nonprofit a year um, and donated 20% of our profits every first Tuesday for 12 months, as well as all of our tips to that nonprofit for an entire year. 
Um, the first year we raised $30,000 for a nonprofit in Berea called the New Opportunity School for Women that works with Appalachian women over the age of 40 who are re-entering the workforce and education field. And we raised, um, like I said, $30,000 for them. The next year we raised another 40 for our local food bank. And the year after that, another 40 for our local domestic violence shelter. COVID hit us right in the middle of our fourth year um, with our partnership with Hospice Care Plus. And we, um, you know, honestly just aren't making enough money to raise enough money for them. To, so to be fair, we paused that partnership and we're going to pick back up with them and start all over again um, when we're able to reopen our dining rooms. So we realized that when you change the world, the first place you have to start is at home. And we um, wanted to make sure that our employees were living full lives, were happy and productive at work and had um, a chance to be empowered to share decision-making and to help us course the direction for our company. And we start all of our folks out from dishwasher to line, line cook at $10 an hour with opportunities for, for raises. And we have set work schedules with two days off a week, um, which I know most of you are uh, comfortable and probably familiar with that, but in the restaurant industry, that's, that's um, a pretty lofty goal to have and scheduling folks to cover multiple shifts. Um, we are also able to provide some supplemental health benefits for our folks. So change the world, start at home, but um, when, you want to change the world. It, it became very clear to us that when change happens, it doesn't necessarily happen for everybody across the board. So we knew that we wanted to be bold and unapologetic about our commitment to fairness and equality. And we weave that into everything we do. Um, little things like we have gender neutral restrooms, um, we hire staff that identify as members of the LGBTQ community. Um, we um, weave um, into our policies and practices our commitment to racial equality and immigrant rights. And um, we, we also knew that when we wanted to change the world, we couldn't simultaneously be hurting it. So we also have a commitment to our environment and doing our part. So we use um, compostable noodle bowls and wheat grass fiber sandwich boxes and biodegradable um, bags for all of our products. So this sounds doable, right? Like many businesses can do this. It sounds like um, it's not that hard to be a socially responsible business. A lot of the things that I'm doing aren't groundbreaking. A lot of businesses are doing them. But why then are not are more businesses not doing this? Um, and I actually think that many, many are. For example, the guys that make our t-shirts, a small company in Richmond called Surge, last year they put on a 5K to benefit struggling small businesses in Madison County during the pandemic. My accountant, um, Steve Davis, he, his firm Davis and Davis, they sponsor a scholarship at the local community school every year. My friend Katie that owns Native Bagel down the road, she um, makes sure that she prioritizes local food sources and buys her ingredients from farmers. So I think many of us are being socially responsible in ways that make sense to our businesses and to us. But for some of us, it's also really hard to figure out how to get started. Um, and from experience, I can tell you that while this is doable, it's not always easy but really is anything worthwhile ever easy? Uh, I do wanna spend a few moments talking about what some of the challenges might be for small businesses to pivot in thinking this way. Uh, first of all, obviously there's a cost associated with it. The restaurant industry says that restaurants should have um, labor costs less than 30%. Our restaurants always um, are at the 35 to 37%, no matter what we do and we are okay with that. Um, those compostable bowls and recyclable um, bags, they cost us an average of 20 to 30% more than if we were to spend our money on styrofoam or plastic. Change can also be hard for our customers 
and the people that we interact with. Um, for example, those bowls that I talked about, they actually disintegrate within an hour. So we had to roll out a whole um, educational campaign telling our customers to go ahead and eat your noodles within the hour, which is when you should eat them, by the way, because that's when they're the freshest and hottest. And the trade-off is that your bowl won't be sitting in a landfill 500 years from now. Um, also, when you are operating your business in a way that doesn't necessarily follow a traditional path or the status quo, um, traditional funders, traditional investors, and even some of your business advisors, they might not get it right away. When I first sought out to open Noodle Nirvana, there was not a bank in sight that would offer us a business loan. Luckily, our friends over at the Mountain Association, which is a um, community economic development agency, they gave us our first startup business loan, and we are so grateful for that. And their commitment is to investing in, in people and communities. So encourage folks to look at non-traditional funding sources um, when they start thinking in this way. So um, this is my favorite part, and I have limited time here, so I have to I have to go through it quickly. But why then do you ask, um, despite the fact that costs could be higher, that change is hard, and that people might not get it, why then should small businesses absolutely commit to weaving social activism and social causes into their mission? And I have four reasons why I think that, that we, we can and we should. First of all, we are building long-term relationships with our customers. 71% of consumers say that it is the responsibility of the company to prioritize their employees, the environment, and their community as much as they prioritize their profits. When um, you have company values that match your customers, your customers are going to engage with your company more and they're gonna become part of your family. And when there's not a match, they are going to step away. In fact, 42% will step away if there's not a match and 21% will not return. Um, second of all, employees are happier. Employees, um, our staff are, they're, they're not just people that work at the front lines or not just people that um, are in the back prepping food. They are actually brand ambassadors for us, highly engaged in the community, really knowledgeable about the work that our nonprofit partners do and can, and can speak about it with enthusiasm and excitement with every customer that comes through the door. And when, when your employees are, are that involved and engaged with the cause and the business, they're gonna be more productive. Um, in fact, companies with engaged employees, they actually see a 21% higher profitability than companies that don't have engaged employees. Um, third, you are building brand awareness. When your, when your customers are excited about your product or service, they will tell their friends about you. And in, in our case, they will take pictures of beautiful noodle bowls and post them on Instagram and people find out about Noodle Nirvana. Um, and finally, it's just the right thing to do to be socially responsible. Um, if the pandemic has taught us anything, I hope it is this, that it maybe it wasn't good enough or there's more to life than working 60 to 80 hour work weeks, than worshiping the bottom line, than thinking that there's no other way to do this than to prioritize profits that maybe the 30.7 million small businesses out there have for the first time ever an unprecedented opportunity to hit that pause button and see ourselves beyond being this revenue generating economy fueling entity, but more instead as a powerful tool to use our companies to make the world a better place. Thank you. Mm -hmm.